everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric on our continuing series on the Mr. DE10 Nano FPGA board. And today we're going to be taking a look at is how to connect the Mr. to different analog video input sources. Because while the Mr. looks absolutely great on a 1080p or a 4K panel, it looks even better when it's connected to a CRT. Because most of the console cores you're going to be playing, all those consoles came out when CRTs are the only format display that we had for home use. So it really just looks great on its intended target television. Before we get too far involved though, if you do me a huge favor go down below hit like subscribe or that notification bell definitely helps us out and if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel we have a patreon link down there as well this is primarily going to be a tutorial about how to hook the mister up to a vga monitor or a pvm with bnc but i am going to explain how to do component video as well i just don't have a component television on me right now but you'll see here as we're playing king of fighters 2002 on my sony 14 inch pvm it looks absolutely outstanding the scan lines are incredible this is the type of tv this game was meant to be played on so it looks the best but if you have the analog io board you're going to see up top here there is a vga port and there is a combination analog or optical audio output. Now the thing about that VGA port is it isn't a VGA signal. A port is just a port. It depends what signal we send through it. You can do a VGA signal, which is horizontal and vertical sync. You can do a component video signal out of that port, or you can do a BNC RGB sync signal out. So that port actually can be configured to do multiple things, and I'll be explaining how to do that. But for the PVMs, I will link this cable below. It is quite cheap and it works perfectly. You'll see one end is just a VGA male port, and on the other end we have male BNC cables. There's two sinks, horizontal and vertical, and a green, a blue, and a red signal. And that's all we need to use to be able to hook this mister up into that PVM. There are some settings we need to change, but we can either use horizontal and vertical sync, or we can just use a single sync source output. Normally that's going to be a horizontal sync, but you can choose either one depending if you have a weird PVM that supports that format. But you'll see here we have the BNC connectors for red, blue, and green, but we only have one input for sync, so we can't use the VGA horizontal and vertical sync. We're going to have to tell the mister to change what it's syncing the signal onto. But you'll see here as the cable is connected, we have red, blue, and green in, and on this cable the sync I need is gray. I've seen these cables use different colors for the sinks, and I think some factories actually make mistakes when they build them and put the sink on the wrong color. Generally it's going to be gray, but if for some reason you're not getting a sync signal, just try the black cable because these are made very, I don't want to say cheaply, but they're commodity items, so sometimes they do make mistakes when you're dealing with that. And all you need to do is hook that cable up into the VGA port and you have your audio out. You can choose whatever you want. But the thing about it is the mister, when it ships out of the box and you install the operating system, it's going to presume that VGA port is outputting a VGA signal. So just like we showed you before in the video settings video, we need to go into the INI configuration file and we need to tell it exactly what it is we want to do with that VGA port because it doesn't guess for you. You need to tell it every single individual setting. So as we pull up the INI, and I'll warn you one more time again, you can kind of mess things up in here. So just follow along closely. You can't do too bad of a job, but you can kind of get there. The first option is VGA scaler. You'll see if it's on, the analog video output will output the source resolution of HDMI, and if it's off, it'll use the core resolution. If you're using a CRT TV, leave this off. You need the core to tell the television what resolution it should be outputting via that VGA port. If it's on, it's just gonna look like a garbled mess, so leave this off. Now moving on to the next setting that we're gonna have to deal with to be able to use that you're going to see right down here, we're going to have an option for composite sync. This changes what type of sync the mister is outputting via that VGA port. If it's on, it's for RGB, CRTs, and PVMs. That is just composite sync off one cable. If it's off, it's VGA, and that means it's using both a horizontal and a vertical sync. If you're connecting your mister to a VGA panel like you see here, you need to have both horizontal and vertical sync on, or else it will not sync an image to it. And this is going to be your standard. Sorry, I had to leave the TV down because it didn't get a camera angle to see it. That's your standard VGA port. And if you want to hook up to a VGA CRT or LCD TV, all you need is a male-to-male -male VGA cable. You can buy this on Amazon for like $3. I'll leave a link in the description below as well. But taking a look back in the options, this composite sync either tells it to be a true VGA signal or to just be an RGBS signal. So if you're hooking up to a VGA monitor, you want this off. If you're hooking up to a PVM or any other RGB source that isn't VGA, you want it on. Just toggle those and that's exactly 
exactly as easy as it's going to be. But don't forget, like everything, you have to save the settings once you change them. And this is in real time. It takes about three seconds for the mister to apply them. But if you don't save them and you just hit cancel or leave the INI option menu without saving it, it's not going to apply the settings. But once that's done, all we need to do is hook that mister up to the back of the PVM, just like I showed you. And now we're playing the Neo Geo core on a PVM that looks absolutely outstanding. It's one of my favorite cores to play on this particular television. But going back into the options menu, like I said, I don't have a component CRT TV. I just don't keep them around. But if you want to use that, you just go into YPBPR and you turn it on. Off means we're either using VGA or RGB. On means that we're going to be using a component signal which separates chrominance and luminance away from each other but that actually syncs on green it's a specific way that it syncs and if you take a look at the top of the mr. analog IO board right here there is a toggle switch to switch that over switch it over when you want to use component switch it off if you're using VGA but there's a particular thing about VGA and that's just a 31 kilohertz signal where a lot of the cores that we're going to be using are actually going to be 15 kilohertz signals and not every VGA monitor can handle a 15 kilohertz signal. They're actually quite rare and pretty sought after. But if you go into the Mr. INI settings, you're gonna see four scan doubler. If you turn that on, it'll take a 240p or 15 kilohertz signal and switch it to 480p or 31 kilohertz. That way it will send a signal to a VGA monitor that only supports 31 kilohertz and you'll be able to get a signal. It's just upscaling it by two to get to a VGA compliant signal. So that's what you wanna change. The one thing I will warn you is that these cables are quite heavy and honestly the Mr. weighs next to nothing. And you'll see here, this cable is stressing the port. Now for 10 seconds on this video clip, it's no big deal, but over time that could weaken the solder joints and even crack them. So when you are using these heavy cables, just make sure that you have it set in a configuration or support it so that it's not stressing that port and lifting your mister off the table. It's just good for the longevity of the device itself. But you'll see here again on the PVM, another thing we need to worry about, and this is just what happens when you get into analog video for retro consoles, is that not every core is going to look exactly like it should on your television. Here for the Super Nintendo core, taking a look at Pocky and Rocky 2, you'll see there are black bars at the bottom of the screen. This is not an issue with the mister, this is just how the PVM is interpreting that signal, and we need to kind of remedy that. And I have a video talking about adjusting PVMs, I'll show you a bit in a second. You'll see here when we actually get to the gameplay, we're just missing part of the bottom of the screen. It needs to be stretched out a little bit to actually fill the whole PVM. And I wish it was easier to deal with each individual core, but this is just what happens when you get into having TVs like this around. And something with a Game Boy, you're really only going to get an image in the middle two thirds of the television. This is part and parcel of getting deep into using analog video signals from retro consoles. Something like the Turbo Graphics or PC Engine core, though fills the TV perfectly fine, as did the Neo Geo core. So it's depending upon what you're going to be playing, how that signal is going to look. But what we can do is we can adjust the video on the PVM itself by getting into the service menu. And you'll see here that I've done previously, I have two different PVMs or two different models, but sometimes you just need to adjust the image. And depending on what model you have, you just Google service menu, PVM, and then put your model number in and you'll see on the TV on the left, we're able to move the image left and right and we can stretch it, we can change it to fill that screen. It's just like here on the model on the right, we're stretching Super Metroid out to perfectly fit. This is just something you're always gonna have to deal with. It's a little unfortunate, but for something like Pocky and Rocky 2 here, I definitely would have to adjust that to make it look exactly like I want to. It takes a little bit more time, but it's 100% worth it. And generally, if you're using a CRT, it'll probably be a little bit closer to accurate, but you may still need to change things. But that is how you use the analog VGA port out on your mister. You can do a VGA signal at 15 or 31 kilohertz. You can do a BNC RGB signal. You can do a component video signal as well. And then from there, if you really wanted to, you could adapt the VGA over to something like composite. I really wouldn't suggest that. It doesn't look great, but if that's all you have on your TV, you could use it. Short of that, if you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them down below. Love chatting with you guys and helping out. Like I said earlier, Mr. looks absolutely incredible on an analog CRT TV, so if you get the chance to hook it up to one, I highly recommend it. Short of that, we'll be back on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday with more videos. And if you do me a huge favor again, go down below, hit like, subscribe. It really helps me out. Short of that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.